Coming up on Around Kern County, we have a special episode sitting down with Chief Operations Officer Jim Zervis. We're sharing information about the unincorporated one cent sales tax measure when Around Kern County starts now. Welcome to this week's Around Kern County. I'm your host, Ali Soper. This week, we have a special episode. We're sitting down with Chief Operations Officer, Jim Zervis. Jim, thank you so much for joining us today. Ali, thanks for having me. So recently, the Kern County Board of Supervisors voted to place a public safety, vital services, and local control one cent sales tax measure for unincorporated area voters to consider on the November 8th, 2022 ballot. Jim is going to help us break down what exactly this means for our community. So Jim, let's start with a simple question. What is this one cent sales tax measure really designed to do? So it's designed to provide a dedicated local funding stream to meet the vital needs of our community here in Kern County, particularly in the unincorporated areas. We've seen a, a reduction in discretionary revenue over the past seven years of about 6%. Adjusted for inflation, that's about 31%. That's primarily the result of policies coming out of Sacramento, um, devaluating our oil and gas industry because of the restrictions on extraction of those resources. Um, and that's translated into lower revenue streams. This measure is, is designed to help fill that gap to provide a locally dedicated revenue stream that Sacramento can't divert that will go to help fund these services on a continual basis. So let's talk about those services, Jim. I know that we did some polling, we engaged residents. What were the priorities that they expressed to us? Yeah, the, the community was engaged over the last year through a combination of two official surveys as well as some online polling that we did uh, to understand what, what the vital needs were within the community, what was important to them. First and foremost, what we saw is maintaining frontline public safety. So this includes sheriff, probation, district attorney, fire, paramedics, um, all of those emergency response type um, services. But beyond that, the community also had very strong support uh, for economic development, new job creation, um, even streets and roads repair, mental health and homelessness. Excellent. So voters will be considering this, but only voters in unincorporated Kern. What exactly does that mean? Sure. So in, in the county, we have both incorporated cities and unincorporated areas or what doesn't fall within the city limits. Um, actually, Kern County has the fifth largest unincorporated population. We have about 305,000 residents in the unincorporated areas, meaning that they only receive local government services from the county. They rely on us for everything from planning and land use issues um, to code enforcement and sheriff 911 response. Let's talk a little bit about why. Why has the board put this measure on the ballot, on the ballot rather, for unincorporated voters to consider? Yeah, it's a, it really is a key question to our local constituents on, on what kind of government they want in the future and what, how they want these kinds of vital services attended to. Um, we have to live within our means. We have a constricting revenue source. We see further downturns in assessed valuation from oil and gas. We're doing everything we can to work to diversify our economy, to create new opportunities and to create new tax base, but those things are long-term projects. So what happens over the next five, 10, 15 years before that transition happens? Um, this is an opportunity for our local constituents to say, you know, we, we value these services, we want a higher level of service and, uh, and for us to be able to deliver on that. Um, alternatively, they may say, you know, we're happy with the way things are and we prefer to have a lower tax base and, and we're okay um, living within the means the way things are today. Now let's talk about this sales tax specifically. It's a one cent or one percent sales tax. What exactly does that mean? So it's one percent of, uh, of a transaction taking place in the unincorporated area only. So, so this proposed measure wouldn't apply within any incorporated cities. It's only the unincorporated areas. Um, and in fact, most of our unincorporated residents shop in the incorporated cities anyway. So if you live in, in Oildale or East Bakersfield or Rosedale as an example, you're likely shopping in the city of Bakersfield and paying their extra measure in 1% tax. This wouldn't add to that. This only applies in the outlying unincorporated areas. The county's uh, sales tax base is really different than the incorporated cities because we don't have a lot of retail 
transactions that take place in the county. Most of our sales tax comes from business to business transactions and large travel plazas. So people coming through our county that stop and get something to eat and they fuel their car, those, those are the types of transactions that make up our sales tax base as well as businesses doing transactions between themselves in the unincorporated areas of the county. And, and this tax doesn't apply to things like groceries or pharmaceuticals, prescriptions, utilities. So all of those kind of basic needs for our residents aren't, aren't included anyway. So it's primarily people coming through our county, stopping at these different travel plazas and business transactions. So Jim, as we sort of break down a sales tax measure, how common is it within our state? That's very common. In fact, about half of counties in California have taken it upon themselves to, uh, to put in place a local revenue stream through an additional sales tax measure. But when you look at the total population of California and all of the city governments, it really is about 95% of the population of California reside in a jurisdiction uh, that have a local dedicated sales tax. So they've taken it upon themselves to add this tax measure to help bolster their local resources and provide these vital services. We're really an outlier in Kern County, uh, in unincorporated Kern County, because you know, six out of our 11 cities in Kern County already have local dedicated sales taxes, including the city of Bakersfield. Our unincorporated metro residents, say I live in Rosedale or Oildale, I'm primarily shopping in the city of Bakersfield and I'm paying that additional 1% sales tax to the city, but I'm not receiving any benefit from that 1% because I don't live in their jurisdiction. So this really does bring an equality. This brings the, the county's uh, sales tax to the same level that the city of Bakersfield is, that the city of Wasco, Delano, Arvin, and several others. So it kind of levels that playing field, brings, brings the resources available to provide services to all of those residents to the same level. Jim, this is a lot of great information, but another question some of our voters may have is that if this measure passes, how will they know how the money is being spent? Yeah, so that's a good question. Um, this, is, this is a separate tax, so unlike all of the other uh, tax revenue, property tax, sales tax that the county receives, this has some specific provisions attached to it. First of all, there's a citizens oversight committee or advisory committee that will take part in making sure that this, these funds are spent in accordance with the ballot measure and how the voters directed it to be spent. Uh, secondly, there are specific audit and budget provisions. So this, this funding will have its own audit, uh, will have its own financial reporting being presented to the public on a board meeting as well as online um, on the county's website, and it'll be budgeted for separately. It's not just going to go into the pot and mixed in with everything else. It'll be very specific so that the, the public has clear transparency and, and can see that the, the county is held accountable to how these funds are being utilized. As the coming months um, mount leading up to this vote, how can the community ask questions? How could they learn more? So we have a contact information. It's my contact information. Mm -hmm. I personally want to talk with people that have questions to be able to answer those. Um, so I'd encourage them to send emails or call the county office and, and we can answer those. But we're coming out to the community. So uh, we are going around to all of the major unincorporated areas in the county to hold public workshops, educational workshops, to be able to talk to the community about what this measure is, what it means, what it's not, and to be able to answer their questions. So. Uh, we're going to be posting a schedule of all of our of all of our travel dates uh, on the county's website. It should be up shortly, and so watch for that. Watch for us coming to your community. We'll be reaching out to the media and try to get the word out the best we can. We want as many people participating in this process as possible, and we don't want any questions unanswered. Perfect, Jim. Thank you so much for your expertise today. And again, you can visit our website, kerncounty.com, for more info. And that does it for us on this week's Around Kern County. If you have a story you'd like to share, please visit kerncounty.com and fill out our Submit a Story form. We'll see you right back here next week.